Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to finish up our OSPF video series talking about OSPF version 3. We're going to discuss the differences, if there are any, and do a deep dive packet analysis where necessary to understand how this protocol works. Now, as you can see, I erased and flushed out my old configuration from the previous videos and decided to start fresh from scratch. As a matter of fact, we're going to use OSPF version 3 to route both IP version 4 and IP version prefixes together. So as you can see, I changed the topology and I've changed the address family uh, configuration around a little bit. So let me explain. So in the access layer over here, you can see that I've changed the uh, IP version 4 addresses to the IP version 6 addresses. But as you can see, um, I've tried to match them as closely to the IP version 4 address. So then when we are going through the configuration, there is some symmetry um, that is easy to follow along, right? So 188.16.45.0 is part of this um, uh, super class of um, or super net uh, subnet. Okay, and this address, uh, this access layer, uh, IP version 6 address family correlates to this particular um, SuperNet address family. And the same thing goes for area one, uh, area two, and area zero as well. All right, so having that said, let's take a look, quick look at my configuration. Now, before we apply any type of IP version four or IP version six, OSPF version three configuration, we need to prime the network. We need to be able to have our links, our point to point links up and pingable. These are, this is the, the prerequisite uh, before running any uh, internal gateway routing protocol uh, in your enterprise. Uh, so having done that, uh, you can see that interface 00 corresponds to uh, this IP version 6 address. And again, there's symmetry um, in the way they are configured and um, uh, in companionship to each other. All right, so this process is applied throughout all the areas. Okay, area one and area two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply this in configuration, and then we'll uh, come back and take a look at the OSPF version three uh, config. Okay. All right. So I've just applied my configuration and have now primed the network to support any IGP protocol. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we'll be using OSPF version three. Um, so before I actually go into my OSPF version three configuration, I just like to take a look at this chart, which I think is very important. There's a couple of things to note here. Number one, OSPF version three is a IPv6 centric routing protocol. It was developed with the same features and functionality as the original OSPF version two, the one that we're used to actually configuring in the previous videos. But because OSPF version two did not support IPv6, OSPF version three was born. Now, OSPF version, th uh, OSPF version three, again, is an IPv6 centric routing protocol, and we'll get into that a little bit more in the video, um, but it can support uh, the synchronization of IP version four databases as well as the IP version six databases, okay? Now, one very important thing to note is that there is one commonality that doesn't break uh, whether you're talking about IP, uh, OSPF version two or OSPF version three, and that is the router ID. The router ID is interesting because um, OSPF version three has preserved that uh, particular feature uh, by requesting an IPv4 address be used as the router ID. Okay, so in OSPF version three, you don't set the router ID to a 48 uh, bit hexadecimal value. You actually leverage the IP version four the, or the old IP version four uh, address family. Uh, as the router ID, and you'll see that in my configuration. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is that if we go a little bit further by just scrolling down a little bit, you can see how centric the IP version three routing protocol is. Okay. Now, we talked about different link types. We talked about um, how OSPF creates its adjacencies, and let's just do a, a little simple compare and contrast. So, on a um, any type of OSPF neighborship is built on the multicast address of 224.0.0.5. So you can see that in OSPF version two, it's pointing to a multicast IP version four address in search of those OSPF neighborships. In IP version six, it's, it's different. It uses the multicast address of uh, FF02 colon colon five. 
and they try to keep the five as similar as possible. So this is for uh, intra-area uh, LSAs. Okay, so this is for those LSAs that you see as O in the routing table, all right? And on broadcast networks, so LSA type twos, where there's a designated router and a backup designated router required, what happens is, is that it uses the multicast IP version six address of FF02 colon colon six. So what we what we have been able to identify here is that the neighborship is actually done on the IP version six link local address. Remember the link local address from the previous videos where it's the FE08 uh, starts off with the FE08 and it's used for neighbor uh, relationships, neighborships, um, the being able to uh, send information between routers that are sharing the same physical medium. Well, the OSPF adjacency is no different. It uses the IP version six link local address to create this OSPF version three neighborship. It doesn't use the organic hard coded OSPF uh, IP version four address that's on the interface. And we'll see that as well when we go into the configurations as well. The other thing to make note is that the uh, authentication of OSPF version three is done via IPsec, whereas with OSPF version two, um, it's plain text or an MD5, all right? So this is, this is very, very important. So having said that, I just like to show you the basic configuration that I have currently set up right now, and then I'm gonna go and apply it, all right? So if we take a look at area zero and this uh, uh, particular configuration uh, follows the same process as we continue into the different areas. But you start off by typing in the router OSPF version three with a process ID, that's no different, okay? You identify the address family. So you want, when you're talking about IP version four address family, you type in address family IP version four unicast. Router ID, again, this is the 32-bit address, okay? Um, and with OSPF version three, uh, another difference is that in the traditional OSPF, you would put the uh, network command and any interfaces that pertain to that subnet would be eligible to participate in that OSPF neighborship, right? Do you remember that? Well, under OSPF version three, you actually put the process under the interface. So you're saying, I want this interface to be able to speak and exchange um, OSPF messages uh, with the IP version six address family and with the IP version four address family. However, this is all done on the link local uh, OSPF adjacency. And we're gonna see that uh, in, in the coming video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply this configuration, okay, on all the, all the routes, and then we're gonna take a deep dive and see what this kind of looks like, okay? So this is area zero. Uh, this is my area one. All right, so I want these interfaces to participate in area one, okay? I want them to leverage loopback zero as the router ID, okay? And this is area two. All right, so let me just go and apply this configuration and then we'll, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so I just applied the configuration and let's go take a look here. So. Um, as of right now, I've applied the OSPF version three configuration on the whole topology, uh, but please make note that I did turn off the routers in area one and in area two because the amount of LSAs were just so overwhelming that in an IP version six environment, it just gets uh, so overwhelming that it's very difficult to even recognize which LSA is what um, uh, in that fashion. So what I did was I, I decided to concentrate solely on the single area and then kind of scale out from there and I'll turn these other routers on uh, as we move forward in the video. Uh, what I also did was, uh, if you take a look at Acme Core 2 and I do a show OSPF version three neighbors, you can see that um, I'm only creating an adjacency with router two. I have deliberately shut off the adjacency to router three because I am performing a wire capture on this link and I wanna show you exactly what we're currently seeing right now. Okay, so I'm gonna start the wire capture here. And we can see that Acme Core 1 is attempting to find an OSPF adjacency on that link with Acme Core 2 
The problem is though is that because I haven't configured it on the interface of Agni Core 2, it's not responding with an acknowledgement and therefore it's not igniting that uh, OSPF version 3 uh, adjacency process. Uh, one thing to note, and the reason why I did want to do this packet, packet capture was because keep in mind again that OSPF version 3 is a IPv6 centric routing protocol. Okay, so IP version 6 is used as the protocol to carry the OSPF version 3 messages. As you can see here, IP version 6 is carrying the OSPF uh, version 3 hello packet to Acme Core 2. Now, both routers need to have an IP version 6 address on their adjacency uh, uh, interface, on their interface to create the adjacency. Okay, it's from there that once the adjacency is formed on the link local, because this is another sig very significant point here, this is the link local address, once the adjacency is on there, it'll then allow the IP version 4 address file family to be carried within it, okay? So it's the IP version 6 um, protocol that is carrying the IP version 4 prefixes in these OSPF version 3 messages. Very, very key point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on to the interface here and I'm going to apply the uh, configuration and we're going to see it come up. All right. And there you go. You can see now that uh, the moment in which I had instantiated the OSPF version 3 uh, configuration under the interface, so initiated the, pro the process under the interface, that it went through the seven phases of the OSPF adjacency process to create um, and synchronize its IP version 4 database and its IP version 6 database simultaneously at the exact same time. All right. Um, so having said that, you can also see that it's continuing again to broadcast on the FF02 colon colon 5, which is the equivalent of the 224.0.0.5. All right, so let's just go over here and do an OSPF version 3 neighbor. And you can see that I am now forming an adjacency with router 3. So I'm just going to shut this off. I'm going to shut this off. I'm going to minimize this for a moment. And I'd like to just show you one thing. Um, when I first applied the configuration, I noticed that I forgot to define the link as a point-to-point. -point. So therefore, it came up as a designated router, backup designated router. So in all the interfaces in companionship to the configuration that I showed you in, in uh, moments ago, I also included this command right here, which I think we are all familiar with at this point, which is the OSPF version 3 network point-to-point -point command. Okay, and this is what it allows me to eliminate that secondary LSA which is, sorry, which is this guy that comes from, is derived from this particular multicast address. It just helps with the efficiency of OSPF. Remember, OSPF version 3 has all the uh, features and bell, bells and whistles of the old. It's just used to support IP version 6, okay? So let's go take a look at the database. So if we do a show IP, show OSPF, version 3 database, you can see that we are introduced actually to a brand new type of LSA, which is the LSA type 8. Okay, now you're probably saying, what is the LSA type 8? Well, in OSPF version 3, um, the LSA type 8 is used on the link local address. So what I'm going to do is just to show you is I'm going to do a show OSPF version 3 IPv6 database link, right? Because this is link states, right? Link states, right? Area zero. And I'm going to press enter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrapolate. I'm going to rip open the that, that OSPF LSA packet and just kind of take a look at the contents inside of it. And you can see that the link local address is what is actually being advertised in this LSA type eight. All right. You can see that in these in these up, uh, in these updates, um, continuously going through. Now, the other thing that I'd like to make note of is that with OSPF version three database, like I mentioned before, it synchronizes the OSPF address family for IP version four. And where are we? 
for IP version 6. So you can see that we just ended the uh, OSPF version 3 database for IP version 4, and now we're into the address family IP version 6. And as you can see, as the topology increases, the database increases, and it gets very, very um, rich in, uh, in content. If I do a show IP route, which is the OSPF, or sorry, which is the routing table of the router, you can see that at this particular moment in time, I'm only receiving intra-area routes, which is exactly what I want. And I'm getting the loopback addresses of all the four participants in my backbone area zero, one all the way to four, as well as the um, the links, the slash 30s that uh, that have been configured on it. So you can see that this, this IP version three protocol is doing a, a very good job in creating uh, the IP version uh, uh, for uh, routing table for me, which is very similar to the old OSPI version two. If I do the same for IP version six, pardon me, you can see that I'm 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 also obtaining the exact same information. Okay, so uh, there is one thing that I noticed, and I'm not getting router three. So this is this guy? So let's just take a look at what's going on here. A little bit of troubleshooting doesn't hurt. Oh, okay, so I did not have it configured for. So this v six address f d boom. All right, and if I go OSPF one, IPv4 area zero, draw a blank there for a second. That should automatically be populated. If I rerun this command again, am I getting it? And I am, there you go. Perfect, just fix that. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna stop the video here and we will continue with the other part by turning on the other areas uh, in this topology, okay? Okay, so I've just turned on area one um, and this has now changed the behavior of this, uh, this topology because from a single uh, backbone area, it's now turned into a um, multi-area OSPF routing domain. So having done that, let's go take a look at the routing tables for Acme Core 1. Acme Core 1 is an area border router. So I'm expecting that I should receive intra-area routes, which is exactly what it is uh, obtaining, but it's also obtaining intra-area routes for Area 1 and LSA Type 3s, which are being generated from Area two. Now the reason why he's getting LSA type threes is because Acme Core two is currently up. All these links are green, so he's advertising the prefixes of one seventy two sixteen sixty four uh, that he's currently participating in, regardless if the adjacency is up or not. Okay, uh, but for all intents and purposes, AVR is behaving correctly. Let's just take a look at Acme Edge one, and if I do a show IP route OSPF version version three. You can see that oh, <clears throat> you can see that I am re uh, he is receiving the intra area routes which pertain to the backbone area zero, uh, and he's also obtaining the most the more specific IP version four addresses um, that pertain to area one. So there is room for summarization. So we will summarize, and I'll show you how to do that in, under the OSPF version three um, uh, configuration. However, you can see how the th how the features and the, uh, the, the similarities of OSPF version two are fundamentally identical, okay? You're just gonna need to get a little bit used to maneuvering in the code, but for all intents and purposes, it's identical. The other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to also announce a default route. Now let's go ahead and do that. So if I do a show IP route right now, you see that I have a default route for the IP version four prefix, but I do not have one for the IP version six. So I'm gonna do a comp T. I'm going to type in the IP version 6 route, colon, colon, slash 0. This is how you define this particular section here. Uh, next hop, the interface of SHA. 
enter, I've just added my static route. If I do a show IP v6 route, you can see that I have a static with the default. In companionship to that, just like we did in the previous videos, you do a show run, begin router OSPF, you have to include the default information uh, originate because this will automatically originate that uh, type 5 external LSA that will be propagated from the ASVR downstream. If we go to area border 1, this is the one that we need to pay close attention to right now. We need to verify that he is getting uh, or receiving the static route or sorry the default route. And if I do a show IP route, um, show IP route, you can see that he's receiving it via IP version 4. and also via IP version 6, which is very, very important. Uh, another key thing that we need to make note of is that if I do um, a show IP interface brief, um, I do have the uh, configuration on the 02 interface going down to the access layer. So I'm hoping that, this, that these 188 networks are being advertised in IP version 4 and IP version 6. So to do that, I'm going to go on Acme Core 1 and we're going to now verify that those addresses are effectively arriving. So let's do IP version 6 um, route OSPF and make no mistake, you can see it right here. So this is subnet 1, subnet 2, subnet 3, subnet 4 uh, that are arriving uh, exactly on uh, this area border router here. These should be inter-area routes on Acme Edge 1. So let's take a look at that. Uh, Acme Edge 1, show IPv6 route OSPF. And again, you can see that subnet 1, subnet 2, subnet 3, and subnet 4 are uh, properly being advertised as inter-area routes. Now, let's take a breather here for a second. I don't know if you noticed this, but on Acme Edge 1, or Acme Core 1 rather, I'm going to do the show run begin router OSPF. As you can see, under the, under the IP version 4 unicast address family, I decided to summarize both the 172.16.32 and the 188.16 network, which is over here in IP version 4. I did not do it for IP version 6. So we're going to have to do that right now. To do that, we go under the we go under the configuration config T router OSPF version three one address family IPv six unicast, and we go area one range, and we did that. Inconsistent area range prefix length. Okay. And there you go. So now it should show up instead of, if we look at Acme Edge 1 right now, do you see how all these prefixes came in as a 64? That means that I'm using all 64 bits, which is the first half of the 128-bit uh, address space of IP version 6. By shrinking the subnet to 61, I've expanded from 0 all the way to 7. So if I hit the show IP version 6 route OSPF, I'm assuming, there you go, it's collapsed. So we now have officially summarized in IP version 6 because we've moved uh, the subnet back uh, a couple of uh, bits. And as a result, uh, this range now covers from 0 all the way to 7. Now, there are obviously some subnets that are not utilized, um, but that's just the consequence because we need to be able to cover from 1 to 4, and 61 is uh, the only uh, available subnet mask in IP version 6 that could accommodate that. So, um, so that's fantastic. All right. Uh, having said that, we are missing one last thing, and that's a little bit of cleanup because I just thought about that, and that is the passive interface uh, on... The passive interface on the IP version 6 address family is going downstream uh, into the access layer because we are announcing out um, downstream 
and I can prove that by doing a very quick wire capture because we had, we we decided to we decided to uh, announce the 188 networks in IP version four and IP version six, and you can see that there's these hello packets there. Right, so it's not best practice from a security perspective to have these hello packets being announced downstream into the access layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go config T and we're gonna go address family and we're gonna go passive interface we're gonna make it zero slash two dot ed4 I didn't like that command. Ooh. Sorry, it starts at 85, sorry. That's why. And by doing that, you're seeing that I'm gonna be suppressing these prefixes and they're not gonna show up anymore. You're gonna see um, them disappear slowly. Okay, all right. So that's uh, one thing that I needed to do. Uh, the other thing that we needed to do was actually go back and we'll quit that. Um, the reason why that's still working is because of the fact that I did not do it under the address and the IP version 4. It's still going on because Is still going on because because of the IP version four. So if I go like this, I was wondering what was happening. See, I, I put it under the IP version four, but not under the IP version six. That's why. So if I go over here and I go like that, and I go I address family IP version six. I, I hope you guys can see that it's extremely uh, identical to all the other um, OSPF videos that we've done. Nothing's changed. It's the way you maneuver within the OSPF version three configuration uh, that makes a difference. But other than that, the philosophies, the features, uh, the stub networks, totally stub networks, uh, how do you distribute uh, redistribute a static route? How do you, um, you know, originate the default route? Um, how do you apply a passive interface? Um, all the principles of OSPF version two have been inherited in OSPF version three. It's only about um, maneuvering within the configuration. So uh, I hope this video served you well and thank you for watching. Oh, and one more thing. I almost forgot to test connectivity. I mean, we did all this work and we forgot to test and then connectivity. So from VLAN 85, which is this PC right here, I want to try and ping this internet device out here, IP version 4 and IP version 6. So if I go into internet devices, uh, if I do a show IP and I do a show IPv6, so I can grab both uh, prefixes. So I'm going to grab this IP version 4 address and I'm going to copy him. And oops, what happened here? And I'm gonna go over to my VLAN and I'm gonna go ping. And come on, there you go. You can see that the ICMP uh, pings are working via IP version four. So let's take a look at IP version six now. So if I take this guy and I bring him over here and I do a trace IP version six, there you go. If I do a ping, let's see if I can do a trace and see if that happens. And there you go. You can see how um, using the public uh, broadcast domain, which is the access layer here, uh, this is all kept private, which is extremely important because it's using the internal IGP and then we're going out public out to the internet. So this is actually a really good setup for an enterprise because uh, these public or sorry, these private uh, IP version six addresses are not ever going to be seen out on the internet. So um, anyone who does a trace from end to end is gonna see a big gap here. They're not gonna be able to, to see these, these um, IP version six prefixes because again, the uh, unique local addresses are equivalent to the private addresses in IP version four and therefore they're not routable out on the internet. 
And this is exactly what you want to see. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.